Welcome back to, I was going to call it the Grim Dark James one shot, but this is the fifth episode and the third time we've met, so it's no longer a one shot. It is still a surprise, however. The Warhammer Fantasy, we're calling it sixth edition game with Dirk and Ludger, your favorite characters. Brought to you by Grim Dark James, the Grim Dark Podcast. Apparently, the Blood Bowl League we are all in, the Brew Bowl Cup. Uh, takes place in this same timeline, so let's consider it a crossover. We're the, we're the main story, though. We came first. Yeah, <laughs> we are the original show that yeah. got ca got canceled. They're the spinoff that's way more popular. Yeah, because of the popularity of the spinoff, we're back. Is this an NCIS, uh, New Orleans NCIS situation? I don't really know. James, you were going to catch people up on what was going on. I've got some notes, too, but I guess that yours are probably better. Uh, no, no, no my, my, I, I, I'm, I'm restoring from memory. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I had, I had somewhere in that. Uh, uh, so, so this is, of course, uh, the Enemy Within campaign, or specifically the Enemy in Shadows book of the Enemy Within. Uh, so our, our heroes... Uh, Dirk and, and Ludger uh, were traveling to the city of Outdoor for a variety of reasons uh, and on the way stopped at the uh, Coach and Horse Inn uh, got a carriage from there along the way to Outdoor the inn, oh, sorry, the, the coach came across a scene where mutants had attacked another coach on the road and killed its occupants uh, The when they managed to defeat the mutants they discovered oddly that one of the victims looked disturbingly like Dirk uh, and also carried a letter about a great inheritance <laughs> that uh, would be paid to the uh, the, the person whose uh, name should be... Oh, I'm on the wrong page here. Uh, the inheritance is to be paid to... Baronet uh, Liesborum? Yes. Liberum. Liberum. Castor Liberum. Um... Uh, and so, like good honest citizens, they decided to pocket letter and potentially at a later point go and claim the inheritance. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> Only one of us had that plan, and Ludger was very clear that he would not support this at all and that it would be a sin to do so. Okay, but he's along for the ride, just in case. He was, or okay, I'll let you keep going. I'm going to give you my nose. He was ordered to follow Dirk. Okay, oh, that's true. Sorry, yes, indeed. Upon arriving in the outdoor, uh, uh, the group did decide to split up, you know, go our separate ways. We do, we're not friends. We don't really like each other. This this party is over. But of course, uh, we're companions. We met on the road. We had a few drinks. We killed some mutants. Going, going to his temple was uh, given orders to uh, investigate uh, this whole thing with uh, with Dirk and the mysterious Baron. Uh, and so they have rejoined uh, after what appeared to be some attempt to assassinate them in the city of Outdoor. They managed to book book to to, to secure a job uh, aboard a river barge uh, heading down along the uh, the Viesbrook River to uh, to Bogenhafen, which happens to also be where the lawyers of Lockstock and Baal, who have the inheritance for the Baron, are based. Um, so they they boarded the barge. Uh, sailed down the river, stopped briefly in the city of Viesbrook, uh, and having a, a a weather ear for trouble, decided to a weather eye for trouble, decided not to uh, to stay in town and, and instead reboarded the barge, thereby managing to entirely avoid another attempt to ambush them, and uh, the barge is then headed on to Bogenhafen. All right, hey, Arthur, I've got you, some notes. Your version of events. We are. Heading from Wurzburg to Bogenhafen, we're being paid two shillings a day on the Bearer Belly, which is the raft boat that we are on. The boat upsets everyone around it because of its immense width. <laughs> uh, Dirk is, isn't technically going to get his inheritance. He has been assigned to the very real and not at all made up uh, fantasy name of... Uh, Prince Hiergard von Frick of Tissentessen. That is the very real and not at all made up name, Tissentessen. Heading south. Uh, however, it turns out that along the way to the Grey Mountains, we'll be passing through Lockstock and Barrel. 
I was assigned by Father Altor, the master of initiates. He saw portents in what was happening and decided that I should accompany Dirk and uh, figure out what's going on with all the mysterious happenings. I believe he called it the Shadow over Altdorf. Uh, we also met Max Hurst. A, uh, I, I wrote down here that he's the main character and protagonist in someone's novel. Not us, but someone else's novel. Like when you're playing Shadowrun Returns and Harlequin shows up, I'm like, this is somebody's main character for sure. Like, not mine, but somebody's. Uh, two men attacked us and were found dead by gunshots. They had a tattoo of a purple hand. Uh, we had some indications that... Shots or was it crossbows? I, it, says, it says gunshots in my... No, it was, it was cro crossbow, crossbow. Crossbow, all right. I wrote down gunshots. Uh, we, we assumed it was a cult, a chaos cult that drags the society. We also heard a rumor. Don't buy any horses in Schaffenfest. The watch stopped a drover who had a mare with a chaos mutation. The watch hung the drover from the east gate. Uh, we met some people who knew uh, Dirk on our boat travel. We, he was investigating bandits. We traded information. We stopped at a bar. Ludger got a really bad feeling about things and insisted we get back on the river. And James told us afterwards that that was the only way to avoid a fight was to get back on the barge and keep going. Uh, I also wrote something about, I believe this was the boatman performed a prayer to Bogan Nauer by pouring wine into the river and then throwing vegetables in. That's right. That, that, that's the, that's the sort of the, the local libation to attempt to appease the gods of the river. Okay. That is my notes right now, and I am out here not just accompanying Dirk to investigate the shadow over Altdorf, but also practicing the Lutger method of clean soul, clean space. All right, Spoon, is, 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 you have anything else to add of, of uh, our significance? Well, uh, considering when I first opened my notes for this game, that uh, Google document was completely blank, so. <laughs> <laughs> but that all sounds right to me. Okay, no worries. Um, all right, so we will then go to the point where, let me just like this. Hopefully you can see the change map. Um, that the the river barge has uh, has pulled into the the town of uh, Bogenhafen. Um, so, I mean, Bogenhafen obviously has nothing on uh, Outdorf. It's a much much smaller town, but it is still, you know, a cosmopolitan little city. It has it has established walls. It has established districts, and there is clearly some sort of event going on in town right now because. As the river barge is coming in, you know, in the sort of mid morning, uh, you can hear the sounds of festivities, and you know, you know how when you bring animals into a town for some sort of like uh, market or fair, like all you can hear and all you can smell is animal animals. Uh, it's like that. Um, there's obviously some sort of market fair or other major event going on, and and you know, you, there's certainly lots of you know, hear ye's, hear ye's being called out, or come and see the great whatever from uh, from street walkers. Uh, there's, there's a lot going on. Um, so Joseph, the barge master, uh, puts the barge in at um, uh, at the docks of Hagen's Wharf, um, which is, I believe, just this Hagen's Wharf is it's Hugen's Wharf. Ah, uh, here. Was it what, what, ping? Why isn't it ping? No. Oh. Do you see where, where my mouse pointer was? There we go. Yes. Yeah, the big one. Yeah, there you go. That's it. So, um, yeah, it, it's a it's a busy wharf. You know, that there's there's ships that are still loading and unloading um, uh, stuff, but it, it, it's there's lots of ships here, but not as much activity going on. It looks like most activity right now is is in town itself. Um, I'm trying to remember, trying to remember how many days it actually took to get down the river for the purposes of working how much you get paid. <laughs> um, I'm sure you want to be paid. Uh, yes, of course. I have much less money than this man does, so yes, I do want to be paid. <laughs> yes. 
Talk amongst yourselves while I figure this out. So, Dirk, I seem to remember that I, as I run my head through my white blonde hair, Dirk, I find myself remembering that I had a very vague German accent. Is that your recollection? That is, uh, that is also my recollection, uh, Ludger. Yeah, yeah. And you're very, you're very pious. I am very pious. You are also, I wouldn't say you are especially pious, but it is good for you to be a citizen with piousness inside the empire of the god of the empire. I agree. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I'm looking over my character sheet, and I don't see preach as a skill. I'm wondering if there's some sort of give speech skill. Because uh, at some point during this episode, I am for sure going to start some real shit. Is there no blather skill? Oh, there must be a blather skill. Uh, it's a, a charm. I don't, yeah, I don't have blather, but I do have charm for sure. There's an entertain skill. I have prey. I don't know what I'd call what I do entertain, but yeah, I guess maybe. This this is a this is a front. There is in fact no bladder skill in Wolfram. Oof. Really? Yeah, that's yeah, lost lost opportunity there. That can't be true. That can't be true. I we, we played Rogue Trader for sure. There was a bladder skill. Yeah, no, no, no. It, uh, but not in not in not in uh, Wolfram. That it turns out. I could have sworn I saw the word bladder while I was going through the skill list earlier. I'm gonna control F it. Yeah, bladder is this, uh uh. It's a talent. It's a talent. There we go. Yes, it's a. It gives you a bonus to charm skill while you're blathering. Okay, so char so sense. charm would probably be the relevant skill. Yeah. I would say then. <clears throat> Excellent. Well, it turns out, uh, uh, Dirks, I am not very charming. I'm about yeah. extremely uncharming. I'd say very, very mid level of charming. You do have a um, uh, very strict. Uh, regimen of uh, belief. Yeah, I mean, Maybe but that's not a bad a thing. That's not a bad thing. You know, I'm better at speaking Bretonian than I am at preaching. So maybe I should just preach to everyone in Bretonian. <clears throat> I think you might find that a little bit difficult. Yeah, so these docks smell like shit, huh? Uh, yes. Yeah, they are. It is. You know, let's let's go let's go find some lodgings in the city. Yeah, remember we had the pizza last time we were in the city. That was pretty interesting, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. See what I what, what, what I can find here. I can find the distance between um outdoor from Bug and Half and in miles, but uh, no indication of um of how long it takes a riverboat to to travel that many miles. It's a hundred. It's hundred and twenty miles on the river. Well, feel, most most like rivers it. barges move about two miles an hour, and then they move twenty four seven. So, yeah, all right. Well, they're going to be moving about forty eight miles a day. Okay, so let's just say between between the stops you did, it's been it's been five days. Okay, we made ten shillings. Yeah, nice. that's pretty good. Sick. That's a, that's a solid amount of money. I mean, making that's instead nice. of spending money is pretty good. So ten uh, silver shillings. Yep. Yeah. Cool. That just so, completely changed how much money I have. <laughs> I had twenty five <laughs> brass pennies. No, this is the poor. big money right here. We're poor. Yeah, I'm poor. <laughs> I'm a I'm a priest, man. Priests aren't rolling in giant piles of cash in this system. Yeah, so. True. So Joseph, the riverboat captain, who I'll, I'll share a picture with, uh, just to um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. how do I do? Show the players that work. There we go. That was the riverboat captain. Yeah, I remember him. Yeah, yeah, he had the yeah. fish. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Is <laughs> uh, oh well, it's uh, it's it's you've you've been good workers, uh, men. And uh, uh, are you are you staying in in Bogenhafen long? I turn to look at Dirk because he's really in charge of this operation. Uh only a few nights, I believe. All right. Well, uh, look, I have to go pay my mooring fees. Uh, I have to go find a local merchant named uh, Rugbrother 
uh, to collect my uh, to collect payment for this wine and organize some unloading by stevedores. So if you're looking for me, uh, I should be here around the docks. Uh, I if I don't hear from you in a couple of days, uh, I will assume that you are staying in Bogenhafen and don't require transport back to Outdorf. Uh, do make sure, though, you check out the Sharpen Fest while we're in town. It's a, uh, uh, a big event, only once a year, and you you happen to be here at the right time of year. Fantastic, Joseph. Um, are, you're quite familiar with Bogenhafen, then? Oh, yes, yes. I come here all the time. Uh, do you have any recommendations as far as lodgings? um yes in matter of fact i do uh i recommend that you stay at uh sorry i need to get the exact location i lean in next uh, to dirk journey, and i go the journeys, the journeys end in not ominous at all thank that you that doesn't sound in, it's in it's in uh Toyaberg. Is that the sub-district? That's the sub-district, yes. We should see if they have the pizza there. Maybe they might have a good seafood mix. We've been along the river, and there's been some very excellent seafood so far. Uh, Captain, thank you so much for your help in transporting us. Your men have been unusually pious towards the gods should go with the blessings out of the empire oh well uh, uh thank you okay we've got to go we've got to go go it's Schaffenfest. i don't know if you heard <laughs> yeah so the 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 so toyaberg the district is if you look on the map, the light, the light blue district in the bottom, but it sort of it wraps around Adelring. So over here is Toyberg, and over here is Toyberg as well. And the Journey's End Inn is right here where I'm being. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so right. it's in East Toyberg, not West Toyberg. That's right, yeah. All right, um, is this a yeah, church? I, I, is that the big building? Uh, I, that is... That it looks like a church. Town Hall. Town Hall. Okay. Right. Here, sorry, it's a high temple of Sigma. Ah, there we go. I definitely want to stop there on our way into the town and just check in, just be like, hey, I'm in is, town. Is Schaffen, Schaffenfest, is that like throughout the town or is it in like a specific area? Or? Uh, it's it's primarily in the, um, uh, it, it, it'll basically be around this main, uh, like Hafenstrasse okay. Okay. and around the town hall. Like it's it's happening in all the sort of um, uh, the major, the major parts around here. Sure. That's a, uh... Uh, Luke, do you want to swing through Schaffenfest on our way over to uh, the inn or the tavern? Uh, yeah, I mean, we should go through all of it, but before we hit up the tavern, I want to stop in at the at the church, you know. They may have local information about uh, things, and hey, we gotta, I slap him on the chest, we gotta find somebody who knows where the lock, stock, and barrel is. Yes, we do. I mean, listen, don't get distracted by the Schaffenfest. <laughs> Obviously, mm -hmm. I I want to know about the Schaffenfest, but we are here on business. Yeah, so, yeah. But, uh, yeah, we can just ask people about it at the Schaffenfest. So let's go! Okay, you notice as you're coming off the dock, by the way, that, that there is a, a person nearby nailing a a, a proclamation to a pole. Oh, I it's love like, proclamations. It's, it's, it's it's got the um, the like the the imperial sigil. Like this, this is a proclamation made by the emperor himself. Oh, incredible! Sigmar's heir. Yeah, absolutely. I go over and check it out. <laughs> okay, um, so according to the proclamation, uh, the the emperor has decreed that the uh that the empire is now free of mutants. There are no more mutants in the empire, which means that anybody that you might find who has unusual deformities is not in fact a mutant but just a unfortunately injured normal person and that to kill people because they are mutants when they're clearly not mutants because there are no mutants in the empire is now a crime punishable by death who's, by the, who, by the, by the i was gonna say who who's sponsored this emperor? who's the current emperor uh i don't, I don't is it is it france it's not france yeah, double check. It? i'll just double check i think this might be pre-france <clears throat> this might be pre Carl france um, this is the, the rumors. 
Because uh, uh, this sounds pretty sus. <laughs> yeah, this definitely doesn't feel like something any emperor would have written. This feels yeah. Yeah. this feels like something that like a corrupt mayor wrote and yeah. hopes that no one would like report it. Yeah. 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 This is, the, the emperor's issued new edict declaring there are no mutants in the empire. The practice of exiling or slaughtering those unfortunate enough to carry some form of physical deformity purely because their appearance is henceforth illegal and punishable by death. Um yeah look if if it is if if it is Karl Franz then probably the implication is that it's come through like the courts of the emperor sort of thing sure, mm, sure. May, let me ask you something James yes as a initiate i am a priest of sigmar and one of if i don't obey the strictures i get sin points we've never discussed it because i've never even come close to it but one of the strictures is root out greenskins, chaos worshippers, and foul witches without mercy. I wonder if I might feel thusly compelled to rip this down and inquire at the church or maybe the town hall about this. This feels like a very Martin Luther moment, you know? Yeah. This, uh, I mean, this feels like heresy to me. It is a direct opposition to Sigmar. Okay. Okay. Uh, so it does look like it's not not Carl Franz right now. It looks like it is Emperor Hedrick. See a bad man who will later be turned out to be a chaos worshiper. I I I've, I've read that far ahead. I mean, is he pre Carl Franz? I believe so. Yes. All right, I rip it down. Okay, no worries. I see this guy nailing it up, and I'm just like, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I roll it up and I'm just like, okay, who told you to put this up? Uh, they were handing them out at the town hall. The town hall? Who was sending this out at the town hall? Uh, the magistrate. The magistrate was handing this out at the town hall. Okay, thank you so it's much. Got, it's, it's got a whole pile in his hand, by the way, and a, and, a, and a bag full of nails as well. Oh, I just, I just take them all out of his hand and I throw them into the dock water. <laughs> okay, no worries. All right. You don't need those, my friend. You don't need those. Yeah. If anyone asks you why you don't have them, you tell them you can go to the church and ask why. What about my two shillings? I give him two shillings. Okay. He seems content with that and runs off to, mm -hmm. find to spend money on drinking. Yeah, sorry. I feel like he should be rewarded because he definitely wanted to do good work. Yeah. You know, but... He was putting up heresy. Uh, let's go enjoy Schaffenfest. And hey, if we see any more of these announcements, we can tear them down. <laughs> I mean, Schaffenfest is like on the way from Town Hall to the dock. So probably like the streets he'll be taking are the ones he's already he's already canvassed. Exactly. So yeah. <laughs> This works perfectly. For me. This is no longer entertainment for me. This is now a job. Like, okay. No <laughs> I'm definitely going to get whatever passes for, like, I, given how faux German the Empire is, I'm guessing it'll be a kielbasa dog or something, but, dog. you know, like a yeah. super long hot dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I think some sort, of, I, some sort of burst. I think, I think it is Carl Franz, though, because his name is all over the, the introduction to the Warhammer film. Okay, 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 cool. So, so, well, the thing is that... that for, like, like the the enemy within campaign is like a really old campaign which oh, has been gotcha, updated. Okay. So yeah, yeah. yeah so I, I I don't know for sure. It, it, yeah. it will, I'm sure it will come up at some later point because this, this is <laughs> part of a, of a bigger right. thing. Um, could I have you both roll gossip, please? Oh, yeah. love to. Terrible at it. Love it. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's, it's, a, it's a plus ten roll. This. Oh, a plus ten. Yeah. Plus ten. Okay. Yeah. Love to see it. Nice. Nice. Okay. Like the way you, Margin, you're marginal marginal success. success. Look at it. Both got successes. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, um, yeah, I mean, because you're obviously approaching these sides without having written them down. Like, but some people who have read them are talking about them. And yeah, like like a lot of people are, are similar to Ludger in, in disbelief. Like, this is, this doesn't feel right, you know, like, um, certainly uh 
uh, yeah, this doesn't this 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 doesn't seem like something the emperor would say, but here it is, you know, clearly on the emperor's letterhead. Um, I let those people know quietly. I'm just like, hey, look, I've got the okay. I don't know where that accent came from. <laughs> I've got the uh, I've lost it completely now. I've got you know the symbol of Galmaras, the Warhammer. I'm clearly a initiate of Sigmar. Yep. I'm gathering these up. I'm gonna go talk to the magistrate. Just know your concerns are very valid. Continue to purify yourself. Have you heard of the Ludger method? <laughs> uh, while you are um, uh, ha like having this, like looking around, having this conversation, you also do note, you, you know, you know that the classic um, uh, Warhammer witch hunter look. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. the, 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 the pilgrim style hat yeah know, the hat the long, the long coat yeah that's it yeah i also um, think crossbow as well but yeah um there is like the archetypal witch hunter um standing like has tor torn down one of these things and is like clearly reading it in disbelief yeah i walk up to him i move to give him like the you know the secret sigmar handshake i'm just like oh yeah what's up you turn this down too i'm doing it as well lord ludger bell rider uh you know, obviously, clearly, priest. What's up, man? A woman? <laughs> it's a man. Man? Uh, he, he, he looks you over. Uh, I, my name is Alprecht Kessel. Alprecht Kessel. Yeah, cool, cool. Kessel. Kessel. Alprecht Kessel. You run a lot, Kessel? Uh, from time to time. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh... This is wrong, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, yeah, this is garbage. Yeah, I threw a bunch of them into the dock earlier. You know, into the water. It's totally wrong. I've come to Borgenhafen seeking mutants specifically, and I find this plastered upon the 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 uh, the crow poles of of this city. The guy I took these from told me that the magistrate at the town hall was the one telling everyone to hand them out. Might want to head down there, you know, talk to the magistrate. Mm, mm, yes. Uh, he, 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 he looks you both over in a, in a more sort of like analyzing way. Like it's, it's clear, it, an idea is stewing in his head. You can, you, you can see like the wheels turning behind his eyes. Well, hey, listen, it's so great to meet you right now. We're just enjoying Schaffenfest before we continue on the duties we were given in Altdorf by our superiors. So thank you so much. I immediately move to continue both tearing down posters and get you know, oh, come and get the festival food. I haven't got my kielbasa dog. No, James. No. I think, I think like, while while Luther was having this conversation, like you just got like three different things shoved in your face. You look over, you're like, huh? he doesn't really give a shit about all this stuff. He's like, I'm. You, you talk to that guy. I'm gonna go get my my kielbasa dog, and he comes back. Like, we're we're leaving, I guess. Uh, it's a, a, a heavy hand is landing on your shoulder, uh, Luca. Uh, my uh, my young priest friend, uh, you could be of service to me in in rooting out this. Uh, I agree with you, but we have very strict orders, very secular and non secular orders. This man has to report to his prince, and I was given orders. To follow him by the Master of Initiates in Altdorf. Very high ranking orders. Extremely high ranking orders. All right, give me a charm test. Shit. Plus 10. Okay. <laughs> Slightly better, but still improbable. Mm -hmm. uh, 44 right. out of 40. <sighs> All right, he, he, so on, on that basis, he is going to let you go. But you've definitely, like, he has definitely, in his head, flagged you as somebody who, you know, shirks is competent. To shirks my work. responsibility. Yeah. Uh, to, to, uh, he, he, his cause is important above all other causes, and so. All right, I'll buy that. Uh, sure. Yeah, your 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 excuse is good enough, but he, it's still an excuse. I understand. Yeah. It's not great for me, but I see it differently. Um, sure. I immediately go get my kielbasa dog. Before anybody else tries to co-op me, I just <laughs> want this I thing. Finished my, finished my first one. I'm like, oh, they're so good, and I get a second one. Oh yeah, 
I, I get some, uh, you know, like sauerkraut and like kettle corn as well while we're going around. I'm just like, See, I, I'm tempted to say that, you know, so so uh, Dirk's finished his first one and goes back to buy a second, and Luke is behind him in line. And when you get to the front line, he's like, oh, sorry, all out. We're <laughs> all out. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Have more at here. least they have the sauerkraut right <laughs> <laughs> it's midday uh, of Schaffenfest. how could you be out they just, they just need to cook more that's all just, okay just, yeah just, <laughs> that's fine yeah you can, you can have your kibasa dog that's fine wow we're going uh, but i love the idea that that scene definitely happened <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> uh while we're waiting in line i'm just gonna like ask the person who's cooking the dog since we have a few minutes with them while he's cooking them i go oh uh, hey you know anything about these uh lock stock and barrel these lawyers you know what the offices are at lawyers uh, uh... Barristers? I guess I, I ask at the uh, uh, at the the town courts it's by the by the town hall. Yeah, so that's a pretty smart idea. This building here is the town courts. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thanks so much. Yeah. And hey, he's a good. He's a good dog. I think that the um, the letter uh, I thought did have an address on it too. Um um yeah i, I mean it, it, I, I imagine it would um we're just doubling up you know yeah making making sure that you know they could have moved i mean the thing about medieval addresses is that they changed all the time and were basically yeah. worthless you needed a local postal service to direct you to where to go messrs lockstock and bile civil lawyers commissioners of odes etc gartow wegg bogenhafen Gartu Wig. G A R T E U space yeah, E G. Let's see if we can find that on this map. Uh, it's not written on the map, I don't think. Oh, okay, all right. Well, we have a gem we have a pretty like, good idea. Wig Wig is like the German word for like way. So it's like it's like this it's street avenue, etc. It's like it's giving you sure, a sure, 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 sure. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Yeah. I just turned to Dirk and I I just well. We're coming up on the end of a very long journey between you and I that started all the way back at that carriage house. You know, and I just want to let you know before we go in there, if they're going to give you a giant pile of money because you look like a guy, that's one thing, but I'm not going to let you lie and say that you're really that person because you're not that person. They might offer you a job as an impersonator, though. That's really popular, you know. Sometimes you, like, show up and you're like, hey, yeah, I'm, I'm Elvis, you know, and it kills at parties sometimes. Or, like, you know, you could be a trained body double or something. Although the guy is already dead, so not much reason to have a body double. Might I suggest, uh, Ludger, that we uh, play our cards close to the vest on this one? Yeah, okay, I agree. And see, see what their interest is in this... Uh, Baronet Liberung before we claim that either I am or am not him. Let's see what they let's see what their interest is. So we're not gonna go in there, walk through the door, and tell them that that guy is definitely dead. Not not immediately. Okay. But again, I'm not going to lie about it. I understand. I will play it cool. Like ice. Mm -hmm. Ice, baby. Screen wipe. <laughs> I do tell us. Sorry about it. So this this whole area, this this whole area down the southeast is actually where the majority of Sharpenfest is. Okay. Inside the walls, there is still stuff in the in the in the city there as well. But it, so in the in the city, it's like um, pavilion tents for things like circuses and the like. Whereas the actual market itself is happening outside the town walls. Oh, we got to hit up the market later, for sure. sure. You never know what you could get out there. Yeah. There could be some great deals. You do uh, uh, spot a uh, a very like large pavilion tent, bright red and red and uh, yellow uh, like sections on the top, with a sign which reads uh, Doctor Malthusius's Zucopia. And there Zucopia, a, uh, yes. And there is a uh, a disgruntled looking, dirty dwarf out the front currently uh, handing out like um, 
uh, shillings to children to go around and and you know spruik spruik the um spruik the, uh, uh, the the fair basically. It seems to be the, the biggest single tent in the uh, mm. in this part of it. Mm. Yeah. The banner reads: Doctor Malthusius and Zucopia, strange creatures of, from all corners of the world, the marvelous, the bizarre, the disgusting, brought to you at enormous expense, like no other in the world. But every everywhere there would be a C. It's written with a K. Hmm. Hmm. So we're going to Lock, Sock, and Barrel. <clears throat> yeah. Yes. Along the way, just before we get to the door, we are we get that conversation in progress between Dirk and Ludger, and and Ludger's just like, and then I saw my cousin on the Cabal Vision Eight. Apparently, he's doing pretty well for himself. He just signed up to be a uh, like an owner manager of the you know the evil dwarves. You know the ones who aren't good. Mm. Well, you know, I'm I'm more of a more of a Reavers fan myself. Uh, that Griff Griff Oberwald is. Uh... You mean the Reichland Reavers? Yes, of course. Yeah, man, you look like you could play the the ball. You know, you look like you could get out there and be in a ball. If I, uh, you know, didn't have my responsibilities to the army, maybe. Sure, sure. I have to say, for my part, I was looking at the the Brew Bowl Cup. You know, I really like the dwarf team out there. You know, Godric looks like he knows what he's doing. You know, my cousin, he, you know, he's out there repping for a, a bad a bad guy, like a real bad, out of the gods, it's like a bad god. But, you know, I like the dwarf team. It looks like they can put some real bash on. <clears throat> yeah, but they had three draws. That's, uh, you know... They gotta, they gotta oh, no, no, this is the beginning. The leak hasn't happened yet. It oh, hasn't... Oh, I see, I see. The oh, timeline I order, it hasn't <laughs> happened yet. Well, you got some prophetic vision there. You, you just get a call, three draws? So That's have, pretty I, amazing. You know, I have... Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go lay some bets down real quick. Yeah, yeah. Well, hey, you know, the thing is, is that my order, one of its strictures is to always aid dwarf folks, so, you know. I feel like if I put some bets down, if you want to cover me, I'll put two down, two shil silver shillings down on Godric. You know, I'd say three draws is pretty probable, base. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so you, you ask around to find where that particular weg is, and it's up here in the northeast of the city, north of the Eastern Barn. Um, and uh, it, oh, we have to go real far out of our way. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's 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 not so it's a, maybe it's a guild area, so mm -hmm. it's more sort of like um, I don't know if you've watched the show Peaky Blinders, but it's it's that sort of like that dirtier area of town with like open furnaces and mm -hmm. um, the sounds of like metalwork going on, um, you know, horses pulling you know, heavy carts past, and it's all sort of Victorian style terrace buildings with occasional alleyways between the to access uh, estates at the rear at the rear of a building. And um, when you find um, Garten Weg, it's a uh, uh, it's basically like a, a an alleyway that between two buildings. And in the alley, sure enough, there is a, a sign which says "Lock, Stock, and Bar Lock, Stock, and Bar Lawyers, etc." Hanging above a, um, a, a a door to like a a, 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 a like a, a office at the back of a major building. Hmm. Ludger has a cloth over his mouth because clean, uh, clean mind, clean body, clean soul. Yep. Uh, and it fucking smells out here. I mean, you just described a Victorian furnace, so yeah. it's gonna be it's gonna be caustic out here. Yeah. Yep. I go and I open the door and I walk in, doing the Pulp Fiction. I just like walk in and I like look around to see. Right. What's going on? So, so the, the room you walk into is is like a a reception office. So there is a a, a, a desk with a, a young man sitting at it. He looks to be probably mid early to mid twenties. Um, you know, dressed in like a nice the, the sort of suit like a paralegal would wear, basically, um, with a little pair of you know pisnev glasses on his nose, uh, and he's currently you know working with a quill on some paperwork. Um, he looks up as you come in. Yes. 
How can I help you? I turn to Dirk, and I say, you have the poster still? Uh, I do. I put it in front of this guy, and then I look at Dirk, I look at the guy, and I go, why don't you tell me about this poster? Uh, he looks at the poster, um, and then looks up, uh, which of you is Herr Librum? No one moves. <laughs> <clears throat> we were hoping to speak with, uh, the... Lock, boys. stock, yeah. and und, und barrel, if they're all available. Uh, yeah, uh, Herr Baal has been looking forward to meeting with you, Herr Liebrung. He sort of says to the space between you, not knowing which one of you is. <laughs> uh, so we need the check, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but. But we can't tell you that we're this person. But we'd love that 20,000 gold. Um, please, please have a seat. I'll let him know you are right. <clears throat> okay. I'll wait so that the two of us can sit down at the same time. Well, he he he, pick, he picks up the document he's working on and um, goes through the the back door uh, to the rest of the office. Okay. Now, James, there's one thing I know about my character based on the numbers on their character sheet, and that their best skill, by far, by like twenty points, is intuition. So I yep. just want to get a read on this guy and know that this guy isn't about to go out back and go. All right, we've got him. send in the strike team. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, give me an intuition roll. Okay. I just want to make sure he's cool. Nope, minus three. That was okay. quite bad. Okay. He, I mean, look, he, he's he's young. He, he doesn't look like he like. Okay. He comported himself and spoke with the diction of an educated man. Like he 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 looks like for all intents and purposes like the, someone who would work as a as a paralegal. Someone who could read. And right, yes, well, so and yeah, right, yes, and, 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 and probably for the for the brief glimpse you got at what he was writing, he was writing actual legal material. He was writing writing. Um, he was doing some some contract stuff. So as Ludger sits down next to Dirk, it's never been more apparent that Dirk is much larger than him because Ludger is only five five and he's sixteen years old. So Dirk is enormous. <laughs> Compared to him. Yeah, I think Dirk is like 6'2". Yeah. It's just like in real life how I'm like several inches shorter than both of you. Yep, yep. <laughs> uh, and he just turns to look at Dirk and he says, Well, things are happening. <clears throat> yes, so it, seems, uh, it seems that uh, we'll get to the bottom of this eventually. So, so this room has good natural light. There, there's, there's no sort of like lamps or anything because it's got like those, um, you know, what I mean by Venetian blinds, like slatted blinds mm -hmm. that you can then, yeah. So, sh shuttered blinds effectively that are on the on the windows. And that's a lot, lots of light in. Um, but suddenly, those blinds are pulled shut, throwing the room into into mostly darkness. Like there's still, you know, slivers of light get through from from the the edges of it and such. But uh, and you know, the sound of wooden bars being dropped over both the the door to the back room and the door that you came in through uh are, are clearly obvious as um somebody seems to be barricading you inside the room talk to me about windows uh so the only windows were the shutter ones which were they they, they some, the shutters are being closed from the outside from the outside okay yeah. That, how like how like heavy duty are these? Are I was these gonna heavy? say that's unusual, right? To be able to yeah. bar shutters uh, from the outside. I mean, they're not they're not barred so much as like they just they've been they've been twisted down into like the closed configuration. Um, and uh, like, the, but the the construction that you saw before it went dark, spoon was you know the, the door and the shutters are pretty strong. Like you're in an industrial area, mm -hmm. you know, you want to make sure that the shutters can be closed tight enough to keep out most of the horrible smells, for example. Sure. So if I like, if I like, tried to dive through these windows, it would be difficult. It, 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 it not impossible, but it would, it, 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 not something you would do with, without rolling dice, for example. Sure, sure. Um, I think Dirk will uh, stands up and like loosens the sword in the scabbard. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I have something to help here. I would like to call upon a blessing of Sigmar. Yes. I want to call upon the blessing of righteousness, which will allow me to bless the weapon of an ally 
and that will make it a magical weapon. And in Warhammer Fantasy RPG rules, a magical weapon sheds light. There you go. Could so the, uh, I only have to hit... <laughs> I, I have to make a roll, though, and also okay. pronounce it. So um, uh, I'm going to stand. I hear the sword being unsheathed. I put a hand on his bicep, and I go, Duck, now more than ever, loyal seven to Sigma needs your eight. Go with God. And just before I roll, there's something that lets us, like, re-roll or add stuff, right? Like some form of... Fortune. Fortune for and fate. Fortune and fate? Okay, how does that work? Before I commit to anything. So fortune is so, so fate is what you burn to like stay alive in, in other ways. So fortune is the resource that uh, resets each adventure. And fortune, I know you can definitely spend for re rolls. I, I just think if you can spend anything on it in the uh, pre uh, many, before you roll to improve the chance of your roll. So re roll a failed test, add plus one success to the test after it's rolled. Choose to act first initiative, uh, or choose yeah, choose right. So, so no, you can't. There's nothing you can do pre-roll with four. Okay, all right. I'm just making a plus zero challenging prey test. That is a success. I also turn because I have a plus two. I turn my dagger into a magical weapon as well. Okay, all right. Uh, so we both have magic weapons now. Just to be clear, this doesn't. According to the rules, it doesn't deal more damage. They're just both shedding light and can damage creatures that can't be damaged by normal things. But yeah, we both, I whip out a really small dagger afterwards, and it is, it's very, um, what's the halfling sword from Lord of the Rings? Sting? Um, That's super, I'm super a sting right now. You've got like a fucking bar of steel log sword that's strongly emitting the light of Sigmar. And I'm just like, huh. <laughs> okay, a, a, a voice which is not the um, the cat the paralegal's voice calls out through the back door of the room. Casta liberum, otherwise known as the as the magister impedimenta of the cult of the purple hand, in the name of the emperor, I arrest you and your companions for conspiring with chaos, murder, theft, and other crimes hereafter to be uh, in, enumerated. Lay down your weapons and surrender. <clears throat> I am not that man. Come step into the light of Sigmar, and we will I, speak. I am also not that man, and I just gave a blessing of Sigmar, like, right in front of all of us. <clears throat> so why don't you show yourself? It's gonna be the witch hunter for sure. <laughs> someone, make a someone make a charm test at plus 10. Oh boy, listen, it better just be you, man. It better just be you. <laughs> Nope. All right. Um, there's a pregnant pause, uh, as they're obviously considering what you've just said, um, followed by a this terrible noise. Like it, it almost sounds like some sort of um, horrible tearing noise, followed by screams and wet um rending sounds um th 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 it goes on for about 10 seconds before everything just goes silent everything good out the there back, back of the shop yeah you good i'm, I'm gonna so it, it, it correct me if i'm wrong this is like back through the the building that like further deeper into the building or it, deeper out into behind the building, yes. okay yeah <clears throat> Well, now, I don't know what to do, man. I'm a priest. It sounds like another priest. I go, Albrecht, is that you? Albrecht Castle? There's no answer. Uh, all right. I will uh, slowly move forward to investigate. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, the door to the back room is, is still barred from the other side. Oh, uh, okay. Um, I'll try and, I'll try and like, kick it down. All right. Give me a strength test. Sure. So the magic only lasts for six rounds, by the way. So, yep, yeah, no, it's it's uh, I I kick it and I go, oh, 
this is uh, <clears throat> this is very sol- solidly barred, Luger. Perhaps we should try and go out the <laughs> the way we came in. Okay. Uh, yeah, Ludger will assist you. You know, like, we'll do the thing where we both get up against the door and then, like, one, two, three. Yeah. Boosh. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, and we both dislocate our shoulders. <laughs> okay. The strongest person make a plus 10 strength test. Yeah, would be uh, f- for sure. I have, a, I have a 34, so. Uh, I have a 30. Okay. So I will, uh, plus 10, you said? Yeah. No, just just as bad as last time. Uh, so so it's clear that the you're not just going to barge your way through the doors. Like you may have to actually like use your weapons and effectively like hack them down, basically. Okay. Okay. So it's just, it's just a matter of time, not a matter of yeah. if you can do it. It's a matter of how long it takes. That's all. Okay. Yeah, I start I start to hack away at this door with my sword. The the door out or the door deeper in. Uh, I I grab you and I'm like, I think we have to investigate. Something has happened to someone who is holy. Yes, I, I, I agree. And plus, we have to make sure that they don't think that we were whoever this person is. Well, just you. They think that you're Caster Liebram. Yeah, well, you're you're here with me, so. Yeah, but. We're, we're both in it. I point uh, to my shining dagger. Yeah, well, you know. And as I do that, I just rush forward and I start chipping away. I try to get in between the, like, door boards and try to pop them out or something i don't know yeah so you'll get, get your dagger through and lift the bar through the side once you get the whole wide oh sure we could try that that doesn't sound very probable but yeah okay so uh, look um it's there's there's no there's no time constraints here so you give it a few minutes yet you manage to break your way through this door okay um the room on the other side is lantern lit um and it is a charnel house uh a a body single body lies on the ground and they have been torn apart as if by a beast, like parts of their body, their intestines, et cetera, have been thrown all over the room. Um, from what is left of them, you believe you recognize them as the, the dark figure that was watching you from the other building when you stopped at uh, Viesbrook. Mm. And there is there is a, a discarded crossbow on the ground with the bolt like dug into the wall somewhere that, where, where it's gone off when they've been attacked. But yeah, no, no, no human did this to uh, to this man. So, do we think? Oh, uh, okay, and and no signs of other bodies or just like no. absolutely destroyed bodies. No, I, 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 only this bit. So it looks like I mean there is a door that goes out to the street from here. So it looks like before uh, the paralegal left before the, whatever happened here happened. This man was okay. on his own. Okay, I'm looking for religious or. Uh, bureaucratic paraphernalia, like something that would mark this person as a officer of secular or non-secular authority. All right. Um, I would like a. You've got time. Intuition. Uh... <laughs> Perception. Perception. Uh, Perception at plus twenty. Oh, plus twenty. I will definitely take that. <clears throat> so what i will what i will give you is that you have you haven't found anything useful on him but you have you, you've found a lack of symbols or you know like he ha- doesn't have any sort of religious symbol he doesn't have any sort of you know, thing that would indicate he's a deputy of any sort of legal body your your guess would be probably bounty hunter based upon what you found what is the likelihood there that a bounty hunter inspired with a well-known, respected law office to entrap a cultist in a scheme to get money so that he could arrest him? This is very complicated, right? Like this. Yeah. Uh, what 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 was the name of the cult that he called out? Something I don't. Re- Sorry, the pur- yeah, the purple hand. We saw that flag before of the purple hand. I'm not sure what the um, significance of this is, uh, but I, I did, feel that. Did it- you want to search the body spoon? Uh yeah, sure. I'll, I'll Someone more competent search the body. Yeah, plus twenty perception. Uh, perception plus twenty. 
Hey, no. impressive fellow. 99. <laughs> All right. You, you, you actually get yourself like covered in his blood while looking through the body like you know you're like, like like a bit rolls over you weren't expecting like the weight to shift and suddenly you've, you've got like you've got viscera down the front of your bottom of your shirt and pants like you're gonna be you know the guards in town will be saying what happened to you you look like mm-hmm. you've been involved mm-hmm. in murder mm-hmm. <clears throat> that's not a good look for you Dirk. yes i'll have to uh i'll have to clean up when we get a chance i i, I will say though with with that uh with that roll of 99 uh that when the body moved, there is a piece of paper sticking out of his boot. Okay, I will. I will take it and look it over. All right, I will show you what it looks like. Well, that's probably bloodier. This is so hard to read. <laughs> uh, what I can probably do the nine, is like can... the nine stars coaching in the Bidenheim Road, Altdorf. My dear Adder. Oh, I'm, I'm not sure if that's an F. Kuftas. Kuftas. Kuftas, yes. Kuftas. You may recall a certain conversation we had last something in the Bruget. bar. Yeah. Of the hook and the hatchet in Nolan. At that time, you mentioned your interest in the activities of a certain society whose name I shall not mention here. In particular, you are very anxious. Uh, to, to trace either, to trace the whereabouts of a certain officer known only as the Magister Impedimente, which is which is what they call which is what they call this called out as well. I'm just writing this down in my notes. Uh, I'm now able to confirm each and every one of your suspicions. After your departure, I made some discreet inquiries and managed to ascertain the that the person you seek. Uh, uses the uses. name Castor Liberung in accordance with your plan. Air Liberung will be traveling uh, towards Altdorf on the Middenheim Road at some time towards the end of the month of uh, Camp Chardrum. Right, yep. Uh, I have also had the good fortune to recruit a likeness of Air Liberung, uh, which I enclose with this letter. I remain, I remain, um, sir, your most obedient yeah, servant, UF. QF or OF? QF. 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 And the, 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 the image is not with the letter. Yeah, yeah but, I, but I imagine that is the 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 likeness that we have. Mm. Oops. This is still such a complicated plot. It feels absurd. <laughs> so, uh, let's see. So interesting. Do you, uh, Luca? Do you remember that woman that we rode in the the um, the carriage with? Yes, I turned her in for being a heretic. Yeah. Do you do you remember what, uh, what exactly was her, um, what her. I don't. I don't know what you would call it. What her group was called, or what her what her heresy was. Well, her name was Lady Isolde von Strudeldorf. Mm-hmm. Hmm. In any case, uh, let's see if we can get some of this blood off of me, and then uh, head to the head to the courts. Yeah, you definitely should not be walking through the streets with that. Plus, uh, you know, clean body, clean soul. But, uh, yeah, you know, we're guys that carry our lives on our back, so I'm sure you've got some spare clothes in your backpack. I'll yeah, go I wait. change out of my uniform and into, into some spare clothes. <laughs> I'm going to go wait out away from the dead body and all of this gore and viscera. Uh, it feels like we should talk to Lockstock and Barl still, but, you know... They're gone. The paralegal's gone. Does it, now that we're back here, does this actually look like a law office? No, it does not. Okay. It's a disused building. Dirk, Dirk says, I think this, this entire thing was a setup. Um, I think 
uh, these were either bounty hunters hired by maybe uh, witch hunters or someone who uh, I'm I'm not sure what's going on, but Lockstock and, and Ball don't exist. I don't. It did seem weird that we came to like the Forge District to yes. see some lawyers rather than the Law District. But I wasn't gonna say anything because you know you might have ended up being the recipient of a cool twenty thousand. Right. Okay, can I can I ask? <laughs> you guys ever watch the show Cops? Do you like Cops? Uh, I I am familiar with. I liked it a lot more. A long time ago. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I love cops. And I specifically remember one episode where they came up with this idea where they had a whole bunch of people that had warrants for them. Um, but every time they went to their houses, like, you know, the weather was like, oh, they're not here. You know, they could never find them. So they basically got like 30 names and they sent them all letters saying you've won some sweep. That was on Reddit recently. Yeah. yeah. And to, to, come to come to this address to collect it. And they all just turned up and got arrested. The one woman <laughs> died on the inside. She she was so confused. She was like, "But I won," and they were like, "No, you have a bench worn out." And she was like, "No, please, no." I was like, "Oh, I mean, it was super dirty. Every everyone involved in that was all a cop. Everybody sitting outside was a cop. It was just cops all the way down." <laughs> James, let me t let me tell you how I feel about cops. All right. True. Every time I see true crime documentaries. The cops are always like, he was a master murderer, a serial killer with an unparalleled intellect. And then you go to the interviews with the guys like, yeah, I killed like 15 people with a nail gun. I did it in front of witnesses. People called in tips about me all the time. Like, I openly taunted the police with my full name, social security number, address. One of my Life victims escaped number. and the cops gave him back to me and I just went back and kept torturing him? Like, yeah, that is why I stopped watching cop shows. Because <laughs> uh, it's crazy. There are some real crazy episodes of cops, man. Uh, irregardless, which means the same thing as regardless. <laughs> I think we got ahead to, honestly, at this point, it sounds like we got to go to the cult or the cult of Sigmar first, because I think that the government is in deep on some shit. And while I'd love to report this crime, I'm going to report it to the priests rather than to the government. And then I'm going to go investigate them. You know what I mean? I think we got to go to the local church first. I do. I do change into my regular clothing instead of my uniform. Yeah. Because you don't want to be walking around covered in yeah, blood. In, 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 in mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. extremely bloody clothes, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's a wise move. Okay. Um, sure. We, we, a, a, a brief Wonder Woman change later. Um, you are in fresh clothes, ready to be out of the town again. Called, called of Sigmar headquarters. Okay. Okay. Heading to the church. It's just Galmaraz twirling on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. I love it. Um. So the uh uh, there's quite a few people hanging around outside the church. Um, and one thing that this church has that is is not overly common in the old world is it has a clock tower. Um, and, and people are definitely like that. Like, there's a large portion of the people here who are clock watching the the church tower as well hmm. um so people people are definitely like 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 conspicuously finding reasons to walk past the church just to check the time um but you know like people the, the church has obviously allowed various signs for uh things that the sharp has to be posted on on the walls of the church at the front um you know there's probably some lay priests who are out just giving sigmar's blessings to all the passers by as well um so yeah it, it appears to be a happening little church i mean it's still it's still a small town church um you know so it's not not quite as massive and grand as the the churches in outdoor but certainly more than where your little village might come from are mm -hmm. i'm gonna tie the shilling real quick on the way in and then i'm gonna try to head to whatever passes for a rectory which for the folks at home is where the priests live yeah um i think i will peruse the postings about Schaffenfest. Yep. Uh, so we get a name generator for the priest. Okay. 
Uh, so the posting. Let me see. Well, give give me please, spirit of gossip roll plus ten. Sure. Let's see here, gossip. Nice. Yes. Okay. So let me along along with the posting. Let me see if I can feed you some of <clears throat> the rumors around Sharp and Fest. All right. Um. So, uh, someone tell someone says, uh, well, someone someone's like scrawled this poorly and written it. it says it says, "Don't buy any horses from the Sharp and Fest." <laughs> uh, the watch stopped a drover from Avalan trying to sell a mare with nine blistered eyes in her mouth. She's now hanging from the east gate. Um, there's uh, okay. So I mentioned before crow poles. So mm -hmm. there's a, um, uh, a a little religious belief in in uh, Brogan, so Brogan half, and that crows are the like the eyes of the chaos gods. Mm -hmm. So when crows come into the town, um, that people are encouraged to like shoot them down if they've got you know bows and arrows ever, and to nail them to crow poles, which are basically like just sign sign poles around. So you probably would have seen multiple places like dead or uh, sorry, not, or d dead or rotten crows nailed to poles as well mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um somewhere forty thousand millennia sorry forty thousand years in the future there's a really small cult on a planet that's really sad because they make crow necklaces for a certain warrior <laughs> um so there are multiple postings from the town hall looking for um uh to hire additional town guard or town, uh, watch patrol, watch patrol, basically. Um, you can get the impression from the gossip that that uh, they've had a hard time hiring uh, guards recently, um, and particularly they've had to because of their cut down in staffing, they've had to reduce their patrols of Bogan half of sewers, um, and which has led to some concern by the populace because a it's a hive for criminal, it's a criminal underground, and also there are there is some stuff down there which is not natural. And people are worried that by not patrolling the sewers, those things could potentially come up at some point in the future. Um, let's see. Uh, probably, yeah. And then there's also the, well, I, I'd say that the church hasn't put up any of the signs about the uh, the rules about, about mutants. But um, yeah, other than that, probably things to see in the Sharp and Fest, there's certainly plenty of signs for the, uh, for the Zucopia. Um, that that seems to be well advertised. Um, there is a there's a jousting match this afternoon between Graf Wilhelm von uh, Soppentheim and uh, Grand Duke Leopold of Middenland, um, which you know that, that people are encouraged to come and, and see the the, the event. Uh, there is lots of people posting about livestock for sale, um, including. Uh, one man, a um, uh, Gordy Widen Widensayan, uh, who has uh, the world's largest chicken for sale, according to his uh, his posting. Uh, there is also a um, a wrestling ring on advertised here, where you could earn up to four gold crowns for beating the champion. Two gold crowns just for lasting three minutes. I'm going to tell you, James, when we hit the world's largest chicken, I knew that we were in the Midwest. But when you mentioned there was a wrestling ring, it's solidly confirmed. Definitely we're in the American Midwest right now. <laughs> for sure. The world's <laughs> biggest ball of yarn. See it while you're on your way through town. Hang on. I've been to the world's largest ball of wine. It was a big ball of, yeah. Yes, I'm aware that extremely small towns in America put one very significant thing out so that people will stop on their way through and buy things. I've well, also that, been... That, that happens here too. We've got we've, plenty of country towns in Australia have the big something. Like, you know, but they're, they're not they're not like big natural examples. They are like someone's made it like in, in, in an area where they grow lots of bananas, they made a gigantic sort of 25 meter long banana out of out of um out of uh a super banana. That's very Stardew Valley. Yeah. 
sorry, it was Graf Wilhelm of Soppenheim. And Graf Wilhelm of Soppenheim and Grand Duke something of Middenheim. Uh, Grand Duke uh, Leopold of Middenland. Leopold of Middenland. Not that that'll come up. I mean, what's going to come up is the fact that you've mentioned the Zucopia three times now. For sure, that's going to be important. But <laughs> These rumors, huh? It's interesting to me that people are saying don't buy horses, but they are promoting livestock sales. Yeah, it's more sheep. sheep mm, cow, okay, and yeah. And chickens. Nine blistering eyes. I don't know that there is a chaos god associated with nine specifically. Maybe it's I the. Will, I will say that there is some in, in the in the stuff about the livestock sales. There is reference to something called uh, the Gelt Group Gelt Group Targ, which is like uh, gold gold free day. I think would be mm -hmm. something like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, gold, yeah, gold is yellow, but. Um, Target's day, so uh, but I think I think it, along the lines of this is just the doing, Kansas State yeah, Fair, free, mm -hmm. it's, 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 day, basically. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's it's free entry day at the State Fair, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we got our hot dog candy corn. I went inside without you. Funnel cake, we got it. We got to get funnel yeah. cake. Oh yeah, we'll get funnel cake when we. But the funnel cake is on, on the outside. You know, we have to go yeah, outside yeah. city limits in order to get to it. Yeah, that, yeah that's when we get go to the, the Zucopia. Yeah. You were reading these things on the outside. I went to the rectory to go talk to the priests. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, small town like this, you're not talking like a, like a warrior priest of Sigma. You're talking just an experienced, yeah. old, older gentleman, shaved head, uh, beard. Like, so um, you've watched uh, uh, Vox Machina. What's the name of, like, the town's lord? Um, that you know, was played by Matt Mercer originally. Um, the town they come from. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, oh, the he, king. Yeah. Of of Uriel. Taldore. Yeah. Uriel. Uriel. Yeah. King Uriel. So, so, yeah, yeah, similar appearance to that. So, but but yeah, we're we're in the Rose of Sigma. Uh, I don't know what the procedure is. I assume I like bow my head and give greetings, and I say, Yeah, you you do the tra the traditional Sigma secret handshake and establish the news. Oh yeah. <laughs> Uh, I am Lord Ludger Bell Rider. I am an initiate on business here from Altdorf. I have numerous things to relate to you, Father. Uh, I welcome you. I am Vilmar Hagel. Vilmar Hagel. Just committing that name to memory. Creature yeah, of Broken Heart. Cool, 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 cool. So I hand him the one flyer that I kept, say, I saw a man putting these up. He said that the magistrate at the town hall was handing these out. This is not, this is a breach of the law, of our canonical law, correct? It's against the will of Sigmar. This is, I, I, I've heard of these this morning, and this has caused concern. I have dispatched some of my uh, attendants to the town hall to inquire as to how they've or how they've validated the validity of this uh, of this proclamation. Um, I've also sent some of my priests out to ensure that those who've been paid to post these signs do so no further until we can learn more about where this has come from and and what this means. All right, if you've got that completely covered, I'm not going to look further into it. Uh, that's a very wise. Um, my companion and I, my traveling companion, I was tasked with escorting him for some time. Uh, we were following the trail of a murder, and when we arrived here, we were set upon, uh, locked in the room of the law offices of Lockstock and Barrow, and I, like, scribble down the address and hand it to him, and I say, you will find a dead, I believe his is a bounty hunter by the name Er Adolphus Kofstos. He locked us in. We heard a horrifying scream and some sort of rending noise. By the time we broke down the door, 
He was very dead. His body had been shattered in an inhuman way, and his blood and organs had been scattered around the room. Uh, he was attempting to charge us with heresy, even though we were trying to figure out what was going on. He's searching for something called the Magista Impedimente. I just, I feel like someone needs to clean it up, and this definitely needs further investigation from someone local, because, you know, there was, like, a whole fake business involved, there was an inhuman murder. I've not, I've not heard of any lock, stock, and barrel, nor is that region you show here the sort of place that a lawyer's office would set up. I agree, I agree, but like I said, here's the uh, address, and... You'll know the right building when you see the body. Um, there is a witch hunter in town as well. I'll I'll have somebody go look for him, but I'll have I'll send some some people to secure. Have you let the did the town watch know yet? No, no, no. I wanted to make sure that that everything was cool here. With everything going on with the magister, I wasn't sure whether the watch could be trusted. But you're saying we can trust the watch. Uh, the watch themselves, yes, I, I, I'm not sure, when I said, the magistrate is, if the magistrate has received some directive from Altdorf, they're just simply following the directive regardless of anything else, which that's what I'm looking into, but, uh, I would say that, uh, so here's my suggestion, well, here's what I want you to do. Give me half an hour, and then go and report what happened to the town guard. That will give us time to get people to the scene first and, and identify is there anything we need to know about first. But if I go tell the town guard that I was told by you, the town guard might question you as to why you didn't come to them first. All right. I just want to intuition this guy real quick. Okay. For that half an hour comment. That seems a little weird. I mean, I understand why, but I just want to make sure that he's not secretly a cultist. You know what I mean? Now that I've spilled everything to him, yeah. negative three. He's you know he, he's he's old. You're not good at reading old people. You're muted, spoon. But he's he, he's a priest of Sigma. Yeah. obviously he can't be bad. I don't. Yeah, I, I trust him implicitly. Um, I say very well. I will pray for one half an hour, and then I and my companion will go sort things out with the guard. If you've got everything handled with the magistrate, then uh, I suppose our next business is to move through town. Thank you so much, Father. Go with Sigma. Uh, are you staying in town at all, or are you heading on to today? I will need to discuss that with my companion. Uh, is there some reason you might need to get a hold of me? Well, only that you said you were here investigating this matter already. So if we find something... Where should we find you to discuss it? Because you said you were here on behalf of the Temple of Outdorf, yes? It's true. It's true. Uh, you can find us. We're going to attempt to get lodgings at the Journey's End Inn. Okay. If, uh, if, if you're not there, I'll leave a message there. So maybe the last thing before you leave town, check to see if any message has been left for you at the Journey's End. Excellent. I go and pray for half an hour. Okay. I pray to cleanse myself because you just leave you just leave Dirk sitting outside for half an hour. Yeah, I'm gonna go pray. You know what? You're right. I would go outside. I would tell you what's up, and then I would go pray. Uh, I mean, look, uh, my boy Ludger. I don't think he killed anyone yet. He's not that good at fighting. I believe he just was assisting Dirk. But still, like, the image of this person dying is horrible, burned into his mind. So he's playing, he praying for... Door kill. <laughs> he is praying for calmness and maybe not to forget what he saw, but to, but to have the strength to overcome the horribleness of what he saw. You know, it could prickle at his mind if he did not steadfast himself. And that's what he wants here is, is Sigmar's guidance. And he, you know, I don't think he apologized for being weak because Sigmar would understand that a mortal is a mortal. Uh, he simply asked for the strength to overcome this challenge. And that's it. That's what I got for you. So, Spirit, is there something you want to do in the half an hour that you're waiting? 
Yeah, I'd like to um <clears throat> funnel cake. So, funnel cake. <laughs> um No, I'm I'm going to go uh I I I'll, I'll go out into the um the 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 like the the true like the actual shopping fest like outside the walls walk yeah. around a little bit um I'll, I'll i'll grab a i'll grab a funnel cake and then i'd also like to scope out the um the zucopia okay all right see what that um, looks like sure so uh you get your funnel cake you check out the the sharpen fest so the sharpen fest like its primary reason for being is a livestock market basically and, and everything else will spring up around that yes with that being said it looks like everybody is here doing deals mm -hmm. nobody is actually completing them like it's all like okay when the time comes i will give you four shillings for these three sheep gotcha. okay put, 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 put my name on them i'll be back you know when the time comes to get them as such it looks like it's all it's all making deal happen we're not actually complete like no actual no actual money or livestock is changing hands just yet so is that is is that like is that normal though is that like uh make, make a make a gossip test at plus 10 okay uh now i would i, I would also uh like to include that the einbeckers are uh brewers of beer so i, yeah. I imagine that they're fairly familiar with this sort of process okay i'll, give, I'll make a plus 20 then okay uh impressive well, success, success. Yes. okay so yeah you, you quickly discovered that um with Sharp Invest every year, there's a 24 hour period from midnight to night where there is no tax on all livestock sales. Oh, so okay. every, everyone's like everyone's doing the deals now, so that starting midnight tonight they can do they can they can do all these trades. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Pay, and pay no tax on it. Yeah, and they can go. All right, cool. Let's make let's make quick make the swap. We've got one minute. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, okay. you do you do while you're walking around you do spot with that with that impressive roll you do spot the world's largest chicken which ah. you recognize is not a chicken it's a hippogriff in a cage <laughs> and, uh, the, the 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 owner is currently arguing with a tax collector about whether or not it's a domesticated animal <laughs> whether, whether yeah whether, whether it's <laughs> livestock yeah. you know yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> amazing amazing perfect all right, and then you head into uh, so so um, head back to the uh, to the Zucopia, which is actually in town near the church. Okay. Um, so they like they, this. It's only open for like a few hours a day, like because it takes a lot of setup. So it's it's more like a circus than it is like a thing you walk through constantly. So effectively, when you get back there, there is a uh, the same dwarf that was handing out like chillings to kids to go spruik. It is currently bringing covered cages out to like so it's like th 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 there'll be like a couple of things out the front that'll be like you know weird oddities that you see just to get you interested and then the real stuff will be inside the tent mm -hmm. um and, you know and when, when you sort of uh like you know when it's clear you're walking past and looking he sort of calls out all right it'll be open in an hour if you want to come back two shillings to go one, so one shilling one shilling to come in what's the uh what's the main attraction uh oh the uh is it the gaping moor i think it's called uh let's double check it is um you you you, you don't want to miss the uh sorry there's i think it's called the gaping moor okay uh the the i'm sorry the immeasurable moor of the middle mountains interesting mm. You know, James, I'm writing that name down. Okay. Is it a toothy mall, Matt Mercer style? <laughs> so it, it's it, you, from a side, you can get so so along with other things. So so the the four main attractions are the horrendously hairy horror of Hockland, um, the dastardly one-eyed dog of Dieseldorf, um, the immeasurable moor of the Middle Mountains, and the ghastly three-legged goblin of Grimeswald, Grisenwald. Oh. Sorry, the last one is an actual fucking goblin? It says the ghastly three like a goblin of Grisengold. Gizen, I feel like the militia should be murdering that thing. <laughs> Am I crazy? Like, shouldn't people just be walking in there with pitchforks and swords? I don't know. I'm, I'm, I mean, it depends on if it's an actual, actual goblin or not. So. 
Or was it from The <clears> Simpsons? <throat> the, Myster- the Mysterious X Quax, a dog with the head of a rabbit and the body of a rabbit. <laughs> 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 Uh, so I'm like, oh, I guess I'll be back in an hour, and right. then I will I will return to the church to find uh, uh, Ludger. Yeah, he's finished his prayers. Oh, Ludger <laughs> is doing um, Hunchback of a Notre Dame style uh, Hellfire rendition. <laughs> Boy, he's had a full on musical with the clock watchers outside. You come in as the birds are all bursting away and everyone is frozen in place at the end of the song. Luker just is like, okay, let's, uh, good practice, everybody. Okay. Hey, Dirk, how's it going? Uh, quite well. Uh, how are you? I feel cleansed on the inside. You know, we just got out here. We did like a big musical number song. It's just a thing religious people do. You know, we get together. Uh, you know how it is. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. You, know, you listen. You know how it is. People who are the same religion as you are good, and everyone else is bad, and will burn in whatever the Warhammer equivalent of hell is. The warp, the Empyrean. Uh, what? Yeah, what? I guess the, the, it's still the warp. The warp is hell. I guess. So. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, shall we go speak to the town guard? Well, the realm of chaos. Realm of chaos would probably be like what they'd call it, I'd say. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Bad people, they burn forever in the realm of chaos. Yeah. I'm going to go real Ali Beardsley this season, I guess. Uh, uh, yeah. Replace, replace Sigmar with a. No. No, 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 no. Not that part, but the part where she blatantly, obviously hates religion and uh, is playing yeah. a religious character and says really ironic things. Um,. Yeah, I walk up to the nearest town guard and I'm just like, hey, so my friend here was uh, uh, tricked into a, uh, like a scam and at this address, in the process, we heard somebody die. We went into the room, they were dead. And uh, yeah, as you can see, I am a priest of Sigmar, the, uh, the local ch- head of the church is just, uh, you know, he knows about the situation. This is kind of a clumsy explanation. Dirk, you want to just tap in for me real quick? So, so you just turn this to a... To just a regular guardsman, a yep. Guard on the street, okay. Yeah, right. I just go up to him and I go, hey, we, we found a dead body. All right. We, um, my, friend was, my friend was scammed, and then we found a dead body. Oh, right. I'm playing um, up the fact that my charm is horrendous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so I will, yeah, I'll, uh, Dirk will step and say, uh, w- listen, we, we weren't, we were investigating this scam, uh, in the course of which we found this dead body, uh, at, at this address, um, using falsified legal documents. Um, you may want to go check it out. All right. Um, I would like a charm test of plus zero. Okay. Can I help him? Uh, sure. Make a plus 10. Okay. Okay, cool. Because I, I, yeah, I, I think we were like, about to get arrested, huh? Well, I mean, not arrested, but like you know, taken back to the to the you know, sure. to the to things for it, to the station. inquiries. Yeah, of you course. Know, like, <laughs> so, um, but I say he will ask for like where they can contact you if they need more yeah. information. Yeah, and I think Dirk, Dirk would say uh, we'll be staying at the Journey's End Inn. Okay, no worries. He will go and inform his watch captain to go and investigate it. Okay. Uh, funnel cakes, Luker. I've I've already had one, but uh, well, you could go for a second. I could go for a second. All right, we do a quick like. It's like bump, 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 bump. It's like Euro house music of them just like walking, eating funnel cake, doing who's that guy? The Viking, techno Viking. Yeah, We're doing Viking. the techno Viking dance for no reason. The producer of this particular animated series just really wanted to include that scene. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the, the 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 where you go to buy like the funnel cakes, it's it's a it's down the alleyway in Sharvenfest that has all of like the the you know the 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 soothsayers and the fortune tellers and 
the people spruiking um uh marvelous teachers and you know uh various uh uh you know love potions and the like uh so yeah th th there's definitely you know um various people trying to like you know hawkers try to pull you over should i be fucking um, these people up uh, i don't know what policy is like but like is this ungodly so, no, i'm you, asking you to tell me mystics exist within the yeah. scene. Like, my, they, 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 they are they are not a they're, they're, it's like um uh like the folk folk magicians and, and and by the same po token you know like the court the, the courts of magic are allowed as well so um they, they're not worshippers of chaos uh they are probably not they're, they're probably looked down upon but not actively like you know um i didn't know if i just burning these people yeah i was gonna say i was thinking of getting a torch and like setting fire to the whole row but if you're no, saying no, it's no, cool no. then i'm not gonna do that no, the clairvoyance, palmists, all that sort of stuff, they're all, they're just there. Look, as far <laughs> as the church is concerned, it's all, it's all hokum. It's all chicanery yeah. and such, you know. Yeah, it's all, it's all um, bullshit. Yeah. But, well, I definitely don't participate in any of them in any way. No worries. Um, Dirk, at one point, uh, as you're walking past this group, there is an old woman with, you know, white cataracted eyes who's out the front of, like, a fortune teller's tent. And she's like, as you walk past, she, like, she follows you. The figure's like, ah, I see the sign of the purple hand upon you. I put a hand on his chest and I go, what? What did you say, old woman? And what is the purple hand? What is the purple hand? I'm writing down in my notes, what is the purple hand? It's, it's, it's the, the sign that I see. Come in. Five coppers if you would like your, your fortune read. Very well. Only if you can tell me more about the purple hand. But otherwise, I'm I interested. Could... I can only tell you what the signs tell me. All right, fine. She looks like. I can't go in there. I can't lend any religious authority to her power. <laughs> You're gonna have to tell me everything that happens. Okay. Uh, I will. I will step into her tent and have my fortune read. Okay. No worries. She she like you know runs her hands over a uh, a crystal ball which which glows, uh, casting the, the the tent into a a, a ghostly light. He says. I see a dark place, a narrow place with water. There is death there. Beware of a big man, a rich man. He will bring much danger. I see a different man, a dark man. He is not what he seems. The sign of the rose is red, dripping blood. I see seven men and two. One of the two will destroy the others and many more besides. The great killed the small and the highest served the lowest. You are in danger. An eye is upon you. And then the the um the uh uh ball fades out, she puts her hands out for a five copper. Ah yeah, Dirk will pay her. I mean that was pretty good. It was like that guy that we met back at the uh the other temple who was like, ooh, crazy stuff. I mean, it's a, there's some hot tips here, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. For sure that dark, narrow, watery place is the sewers. We're going to the sewers at this adventure spoof, for sure. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the big, the big rich man will bring danger. Yeah. Magistrate? Maybe. Uh, but, the, but the dark man is not what he seems. Did you say seven men, two will destroy the others and many more besides? I see seven men and two. One of the two will destroy the others and many more besides. And then it was the great killed the small? The great killed the small and the higher served the lowest. Okay. Look, we can't read too much into this. This is grim, dark fucking James. Well, Half and, of this and, shit and, is and total and, bullshit and, from the witch woman, and like one or two lines are going to actually be relevant, and they'll two, also two, be like two, half true as well. Yeah, two lies and the truth. On the other hand, James isn't giving us this. This is from the mod. I feel like I'm metagaming so hard right now, but I did three seasons of Rogue Trader with James, so fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah.
Definitely for sure sewers, though. Out of everything, that rings the most true. Yeah. And I mean, it is going to be super dangerous. Sewers are always super dangerous. She there. didn't tell you anything about the sign of the purple hand, though. No, she didn't. No. You should kill her. She, she, she promised she, to tell you. I'll say that she infers that the eye that's upon you is associated it's, with the purple hand. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. She says, an eye or the eye? The eye. The eye. That's important. Let me double check what she actually says. I'll just double it. It's, uh, what was it? The optional. We've now confirmed for sure that this is part of the magical. Let's be clear. Jason just made this a girl. The eye. The eye. Okay. That sounds. I don't know enough about lore, but the eye sounds really specific, you know? Okay. All right. Just continuing above the table just for one second. We have no idea as players what purple hand might be, right? Purple is a generally associated as being a bad color. I mean, you know, like, I think Warhammer kind of associates it with undead purple orcs. Uh, Zinch, yeah. Uh, look, look, I think I think that in in like the imperial society, purple is associated with royalty. Interesting. Like 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 in reality, purple is a hard dye to make. So if you had purple clothes, you were often wealthy. Interesting. Yeah. I want to touch back on something Spoon said earlier. The, the woman from episode one. He was part of a specific society of nobles who looked down. That's what I was asking. Yeah. What was the name of that society? Uh, don't she actually told you what it was. Give me a second. It was... But we found... We, it might not have been from her, but we found out from someone else because yeah. I've snitched. I'm 100% snitching. I mean, I'm a priest. Yeah. Okay. The... No woman. Um... I'd have, I'd have to like I, it'll, it'll okay we, we can come back to it later we can come back to it later just for the folks at home while while we're doing a gm loading screen right here uh a reminder that the doom of my death of of ludger barrel rider's death is more will send you a maiden is that true or not i guess we'll find out m-o-r-r yeah it's the god of death <clears throat> yep that's some fucked up shit and let's see hang on where's my as a talents loading loading tips at the bottom of the screen uh yeah and, and so so in the same vein uh dirk's doom is uh thy last exclamation shall be love okay we'll make sure as you're dying in the sewers you go love <laughs> uh if you don't think you can find this in a very short amount of time, James, we can. It, it was just—it was something, something that like it was like a fashionable society for the nobles to be in. That was something yeah. like it, it, you know, it. it, it I just want to make sure it wasn't just called the Purple Hand outright. Yeah, I, no, 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 no. I remember it, it the, definitely was not. No, I, I remember at the time it didn't seem very serious. Yeah, but I was just like, oh, well, maybe this like loops back around to that person we met at the very beginning. I agree with you. I think that was a good lead. But if Jane. If it's not written in the, if James is going, I don't know, then there's not like a big warning text box yeah. that just yeah, says, yeah. hey, remember the Countess? <laughs> this, this is her society. Um, let's, again, let's metagaming go. so hard right now. <laughs> let's go. Uh, let's go speak with the, the magistrate. I <clears throat> stop you and I say, I don't. Do you think we have to do that? I spoke with the father, Father Wilmar Hagel. And he sent his own people to do that. Okay. If you, I have been tasked to follow you on your journey. And while we've done the lock, stock, and borrow part, I guess I'm following you till you report to Tissentossen. So if you want to go, I will go with you and I will help you. But I don't have a reason to go because I've done my part for Sigmar. Okay. Well, let's. I agree with you that it does seem like a wise idea to go. Yeah, let's let's go secure lodgings first at this uh, journey's end. And journey's end, and seems like a good place to round out the session too. Yes, you know. Yes. Yeah. 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 Right. Screen wipe. Yeah. Well, I have, I have no specific information on journey's end, so we, I'm happy to say that we can we can end it there. I can give you your XP for the stuff that you completed this session. Okay. 
So, we get uh, negative XP for avoiding the Witch Hunter. So let's just see. So you get, uh, so how will this work? Let's go to the experience value. It must be numeric. So 20 should have appeared. Can you try hitting receive there and now see if it's working yet where you've actually. Uh, mine says no character assigned. See the player configuration menu to assign a character. I got mine. Okay. Uh, so I, I, I'm not sure that I'm assigned to Dirk Einbecker. Because when I roll, I, I can't. I It rolls as a uh, spoon, spoon character. character. Yeah. So let me see. Uh, you're the owner of uh, of Big Spoon. Uh, so, so yeah, because if, if I look at, like, on the players, it's down the bottom. AP, it says AP is um, slip character, Dirk Einbecker. Okay. Now, now, try it now. Try with it now. Okay. Yep. There we go. Got it. Okay. So, uh yeah, that, that, that Adolphus is like, so. If if you kill him either in in um, Outdorf or on the or on the way here, or he dies there, you get the XP regardless. Even though you didn't defeat him, he, when he eventually dies, the group gets the XP. Gotcha. Nice. Uh, and then we've also got the resolution for the Shamfest. So you have so far, you've had your fortune toll. You can both receive it, even though it's uh. Um, nice. I love getting experience for something I explicitly did not do. Yeah. I think that's that's the only stuff other than the, I need to give you ten more, which because there's one that has like five. It says you get five to ten points for this. When I try to click this, this is not a numeric value. Actually, I wonder if I can go and edit this and that'll work. One second. Um. Edit. Now this is a for the folks at home. This is a pre-made module that you can. Yeah. Okay. Just use. On Foundry, so that's Foundry Virtual Tabletop that we're playing on our private server. Uh, you can get the pre-made Shadow of Altdorf campaign. Oh no, Enemy Within is that what we're playing? So, so, so any, any, Enemy Within is the whole campaign. This right. yeah. book is Enemy in Shadow. Enemy in Shadow. Yeah, so that should be all the XP done now for what we what we did today. Okay. Cool. <clears throat> how, much, how much xp oh my uh, god holy visions uh, costs 100 experience yeah, so <laughs> ta 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 talents are expensive so i'm, a, I'm a, th I've, i have currently 35 unspent xp i'm saving up for my um warrior born talent from recruit right yeah i mean the thing is though holy visions i think lets you see magic and also lets you see um if anything's related to your cult when you arrive in an area so it'd be like hey what happened here with sigmar what's what's sigmarly important that seems pretty important just being able to see magic seems important yeah uh boy though 100 xp is really fucking rough james amazing game i feel like i went w super meta at the end and i apologize for that <laughs> Uh, that's how it goes with module games, so, you know, I start getting those warnings, I'm just like, well, if he doesn't know about this, then it must not be that important to the module, so, but... To be honest, I, I think that, because there's not that much detail about Isolde, um, in the module, I think I made up the... Oh, let's the, go back a few, the heresy? Let's go back yeah. I, I think mm -hmm. it, was, okay. it, was, it was like, it was like, a, it was like a minor sort of noble... Yeah, okay. Oh, you know, what... What 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 if what if, what if the, the emperor isn't really the chosen the sigma or something you know or, or just um, something something that like you know foppish nobles get into that make themselves feel superior basically. Um, I, I, so I, I may have actually made up, which is why I can't find information about. It. <laughs> That's fine. It was a good entry point for my character to be very religiously strict about it. Mm -hmm, yeah. Dunking on people. Spoon always glad to be adventuring with Dirk. Uh, I was essentially totally useless once again. I feel like I only upset people this episode. <laughs> and I made some light. Nice. Fortunately, we have Dirk here to get us out of being implicated in a murder. Yeah, and, and being chaos worshippers as part of a cult. And, <laughs> you know. I, you got us into that mess. Don't, don't say you got... You can't claim credit for getting us out of a situation you put us into. Uh, yeah, I can. I just also get credit for getting us into it. <laughs> no 20,000 gold coins here, my friend. Yeah, unfortunate, unfortunate. I was going to retire rich. Yeah, well, now you have to get back to your job and tiss and toss him. Yeah. Because that's definitely what's going to We're going to get back on that boat. We keep going south. No, no mutants here. No sewers. We just get up and leave the town. <laughs> Yeah, obviously. There are no, no, no mutants no in the Empire at all. 
Yeah. Mutant free. Mutant free yeah. empire. <laughs> everybody knows. Everybody knows there's no such thing as a mutant. Yeah. I uh so I always talk about in progress. We we are halfway through chapter six of nine of the first book. There you go. Nice. Nice. Okay. And this is only episode five, so pretty good. That's it. We'll be back so, next Wednesday afternoon, maybe. Yeah, should, yeah I, 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 I'm pretty good. No, I, I don't travel until I go to Vegas next month. So, cool. Maybe we even play next Tuesday night. It's not clear whether. You know, the thing is that game used to be optional Tuesday nights, but then mm-hmm. it got to the point where Rad would only know if he could show up like literally an hour beforehand, so it was no longer <laughs> as optional. Right. It became surprise Tuesday night. Yeah, surprise. Yeah. Yeah. So the surprise <laughs> now is you may get an extra episode of Warhammer Fantasy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. One, what, it, went, it went from being like, I was like, oh, it's Star Wars. Okay. And then it was the, the Shadowrun game was the surprise. And then now it's Shadowrun has become the, the standard. And now it's uh, Warhammer Fantasy is uh, <laughs> the surprise. I, I, and, and by the way, don't forget the spin off show, Blood Bowl. Yeah, of course. Spin-off yeah. show? Is that what we're calling it? <laughs> Where would James, if I wanted to watch that, I would go to youtube.com slash grimdark podcast and I would look up apparently. the Brew Bowl League. Yeah, apparently. That's it. Incredible. So good. No. All one universe. I hear that those dwarves are gonna pull three draws. Yeah, yeah. Go go lay down your bets now. <laughs> I mean, we don't know how you do in your last match. You could get a fourth draw, in which case... I could, I could. And yeah, in which case, all those bats are bad. <laughs> those are bad bats. Well, I, I, I told Spoon, Spoon's got a pretty good chance. Spoon has to lose by four by or more. four to get, or more, to yeah. get To get knocked out. Now listen, the, the human, the Talabeckland, or the Tal... Is it Talabeck Griffins? Yeah, Tal- Talabeckland. Yeah, Tyler Beckland Griffins. I mean, they're they're a passing team. So I mean, if they get some good passes off, it could, it could happen. Yeah. But yeah, they've they've scored four in a match before. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Gonna have to uh, put an end to that. Yeah. Is tomorrow the official Blood Bowl release, or is that in two days? I think it's the twenty fourth. Twenty fourth. Okay, it's the official date. Interesting. Interesting. Well, okay, that might have. Uh, that being said, that that might have been on my Steam because I'm in Australia. It tells me the date based. It's yeah, uh, for yeah. me. It says February twenty third, twenty twenty three. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So that is it's the, tomorrow. Tomorrow's the big drop. Yep. There you go. If you want to, if you want to, you know, play a buggy piece of mess, then go. Oh yeah, people are complaining so badly about it. So badly. Yeah. It's like I I I loaded up, played it for like half an hour. I went. I'm gonna go back and play some Blood Bowl two now because I'm interested in playing Blood Bowl, but I want to play it well. <laughs> uh, look, look, Blood Bowl 2 was a hot mess when it came out too. It, it you know it's it's just it's the nature of games right now that every game comes out in early access basically. Yeah. And you, know, you have to buy the season pass to get the uh to get the working content. Hate that. Yeah. Not a fan. I'm pissed off about the monetization system as well in in Blood Bowl 3, so. Yeah, with the gear and uh like the gear where you have to, you know, Buy it, buy it every buy every it. instance of it. If I want to put it on three teams, I've got to buy it three times. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So <sighs> that'll, that'll, that'll change. They'll cop so much flack. Though. They, they happened with Blood Bowl too. They the, they had day one DLC, and mm-hmm. people complained that day one DLC became free. Yeah. So yeah, fight the power, people. Keep complaining. That's right. Season means of production. Okay, this we're edging so dangerously close into being accused of cancel culture or being liberals i guess for <laughs> whatever that word Dark means socialists. yeah <laughs> all right uh well our characters are definitely neither liberals nor socialists but you will see them next week enforcing the status quo of, of a, well i think the warhammer fantasy empire isn't really that bad i mean Everyone is paranoid and suspicious of each other and is expected to do there's their part. Of, there's a lot of burning innocence at the stake. In- yeah, but on the other hand, they do live right next door to actual vampires who are attempting to infiltrate their society at every level. Yeah, and I mean, so, there are cultists. Archeon shows up every couple of years. I mean, you know. I, the, listen, the threat is real. That's the yeah. that's the biggest difference, is that the threat of, it, it, of your society collapsing is very real. It's not paranoid when everyone is trying to kill you. Yes, I agree. That's how I feel about real life. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm hitting stop recording now.